قال المؤلف رحمه الله The author may Allah have mercy upon him said وقد عد كثير من الفقهاء كالفقيه الحنفي بدر الرشيد وهو قريب من القرن الثامن الهجري أشياء كثيرة The jurists like the Hanafi jurist Badr al-Rashid, who's close to the 8th Hijri century, have counted many things, meaning many cases of blasphemy or cited many examples. So being aware of them is a must. فَإِنَّ مَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفِ الشَّرَّ يَقَعْ فِيهِ for indeed, whoever does not know the evil falls into it. فَالْيُحْذَرْ So let there be warning. فَقَدَ ثَبَتَ عَنْ أَحَدِ الصَّحَابَةِ أَنَّهُ أَخَذَ لِسَانَهُ وَخَاطَبَهُ It is confirmed from one of the companions that he took hold of his tongue and addressed it. Meaning that either he took hold of his tongue and then he released it. And then he addressed his own tongue. Or Allah enabled him to do a karama, And he addressed his own tongue while holding it. What did he say? Ya lisanu kul khayran taghnam. Oh tongue. Say good and reap the benefits. Waskut an sharrin taslam min qabli an tandam. And be silent from evil. You will be safe before you regret. Indeed, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, أَكْثَرُ خَطَايَ بْنِ آدَمَ مِنْ لِثَانِهِ Most of the sins of the son of Adam are from his tongue. وَمِنْ هَذِهِ الْخَطَايَ الْكُفْرُ وَالْكَبَائِرِ And among these sins is... And among these sins are the blasphemy and major sins. الشرح, the explanation. معنى الحديث أن من قال من الكلام ما هو خير كذكر الله وأفضله التهليل كسب ثوابا. The meaning of the hadith is that whoever said of speech that which is good, like mentioning God and the best of that is saying, no one is God but Allah, then he acquired reward. And that whoever held his tongue from what there is in it, sin, then he has preserved himself or protected himself. Was salima and he was safe. لأن من لم يحفظ لسانه فقد عرض نفسه للهلاك. Because whoever does not protect his tongue, then he has exposed himself to doom. لأن أكثر المهالك سببها اللسان. Because most of the destructive matters or most of the uh, destructions. سببها اللسان. Its reason is the tongue. فَإِن مَاتَ وَهُوَ عَلَى هَذِهِ الْحَالِ فَإِنَّهُ يَنْدَمُ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ النَّدَمْ So whoever dies upon this state, then he shall regret on the day when regret does not benefit. قال المؤلف رحمه الله The author may Allah have mercy upon him said وفي حديث آخر للرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم and in another hadith of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم إن العبد لا يتكلم بالكلمة certainly the slave he will surely utter the word 
مَا يَتَبَيَّنُ فِيهَا He does it. He does not know its judgments. يَهْوِي بِهَا فِي النَّارِ أَبْعَدَ مِمَّا بَيْنَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ He falls by it into the fire further than what is between the east and the west. He falls by it, meaning by that word, further than what is between the east and the west. رواه البخاري ومسلم من حديث أبي هريرة. البخاري and Muslim narrated that from the hadith of Abu هريرة. الشرح the explanation. معنى الحديث معنى حديث شيخين أن الإنسان قد يتكلم بكلمة لا يرى أن فيها ذنبا. The meaning of the hadith of the two shaykhs, that's Al-Bukhari and Muslim, is that the human might speak with a word that he does not see, that there is in it any sin. Here, qad yatakallam, qad, when qad comes in front of a mudari'ir verb that means present or future, then it means ihtimal, possibly, maybe. And sometimes it means definitiveness. Like when Allah says, قَدْ يَعْلَمُ اللَّهُ That means Allah knows for sure. Here, قَدْ يَتَكَلَّمُ بِكَلِمَةٍ لَا يَرَى أَنَّ فِيهَا ذَنْبًا He might speak with a word that he does not see that in it there is any sin. And he does not see it harmful for him. And he does not see it harmful for him and that he is deserving by it falling to the bottom of hell, the pit of hell. Like, as proven by the narration of a tirmidhi with no difference between his uh, being receptive to the blasphemy or not receptive to the blasphemy. That part is not considered. The bottom of the pit of hell is the distance of 70 years. وَذَلِكَ مَحَلُّ الْكُفَّارِ And that's the place for the blasphemers. لَا يَصِلُ عُصَاتُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ لَا يَصِلُهُ عُصَاتُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ The sinful Muslims do not reach it. وَقَدْ عُلِمَ أَنَّ الْمَسَافَةَ الَّتِي تُوصِلُ إِلَىٰ قَعْرِ جَهَنَّمَ هِيَا هَذِهِ And it is known that the distance that leads to the bottom of the pit of hell is this. من الحديث الذي فيه أنه بينما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مع بعض أصحابه From the hadith in which it is mentioned that when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was with some of his companions, if samiru wajbatan a sauta, when they heard a crash or a commotion, yani they heard a bang, a, a great noise or sound. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And so the Messenger of Allah 
صلى الله عليه وسلم said تدرون ما هذا do you know what is this قالوا الله ورسوله أعلم they said Allah and his messenger know best قال هذا حجر رمي به في النار منذ سبعين خريفا he said this is a boulder that was thrown into the fire 70 years ago 70 autumns ago فهو يهوي في النار الان حتى انتهى الى قعرها and it was falling in the fire until now until it reached its bottom رواه مسلم that's narrated by Muslim ثم ان العلماء اختلفوا في بعض الاشياء furthermore the scholars differed about some things هل هي كفر أم لا are they blasphemy or not uh, so let me mention so that I don't forget here in the case when they differed if something is blasphemy or not and then someone did that and we're going to see some examples then this is a case when it is recommended for a person to say precautionary shahada or it's valid this is a case when it's valid for a person to say the precautionary shahada so one case when it's valid to say the precautionary shahada is when something is blasphemy but you're not sure if you did it or not like a statement has two meanings one is blasphemy and one is not you're not sure which meaning you meant or something is blasphemy and you don't know if you did it in the past or not so you don't know if you committed some you know something is blasphemy but you don't know if you did it or not another case is a case when the scholars differed about something being blasphemy or not and then you fell into that then you can say a precautionary shahada فقال بعض إنها كفر وقال بعض إنها ليست كفرا. So some said that it's blasphemy and some said that it's not blasphemy. هؤلاء العلماء بعضهم مجتهدون اجتهادا مطلقا وبعضهم مجتهدون في المذهب. Those scholars, some of them are absolute mujtahids. And some of them are mujtahids within the madhab. And here's the clarification for you. In the fatwas of Qadli Khan, it is documented, quote, Rajulun salla ila ghayri al-qiblati muta'ammidan. The case of a man who prayed away from the Qibla intentionally. Ruya an Abi Hanifa rahimahullahu ta'ala annahu yakfur. It is reported from Abu Hanifa or about Abu Hanifa. May Allah have mercy upon him that he blasphemes. Wa in asab al-Qibla even if he actually got the correct Qibla. According to, according to what was reported about Abu Hanifa, he would blaspheme even if he got the right Qibla because he wanted to face the wrong way on purpose. وَبِهِ أَخَذَ الْفَقِيهُ أَبُوا اللَّيْثِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى And by that took the jurist Abu Layth, may Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon him. وَكَذَا إِذَا صَلَّى فِي الثَّوْبِ النَّجِسِ أَوْ بِغَيْرِ طَهَارَةِ And likewise, if he prayed in filthy clothing or without purification, on purpose. وَبَعْضُ الْمَشَايِخِ قَالُوا And some shaykhs said, إِنْ فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ بِتَعْوِيلِ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى فَأَيْنَ مَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ some sheikhs said, if he did that out of 
giving an interpretation to the saying of God, exalted is he, which means wherever you turn yourselves, then there is the qibla of Allah. Wajhullah in this ayah means qibla to Allah. لا يكون كافرا. Then he would not be a disbeliever. وقال مشايخ بخارا. وقال مشايخ بخارا. And the sheikhs of Bukhara said, منهم القاضي الإمام علي السغدي. And among them is the judge, Imam Ali السغدي. وشمس الأئمة الحلواني. And also, Shamsul Aimma Al Halawani is among them, or it could be read Al Hulwani. So I have that Al Halawani and Al Hulwani. Rahimahullah Ta'ala, may Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon him. Law Salla ila Ghayri al Qiblati la yakfur. Had one prayed. Away from the Qibla, he does not blaspheme merely by that. وَكَذَا إِذَا صَلَّى فِي الثَّوْبِ النَّجِسِ And likewise, if he prays in filthy clothing. لِأَنَّ الصَّلَاةَ إِلَىٰ غَيْرِ الْقِبْلَةِ جَائِزَةٌ حَالَةَ الْإِخْتِيَارِ Because praying away from the Qibla is permissible under normal circumstances. يعني some normal circumstances وهو التطوع على الدابة which is the optional prayer upon an animal doesn't require being in war or something like that that's what's meant by normal circumstances ومن العلماء من جوز الصلاة في الثوب النجس and among the scholars meaning mujtahids is who permitted validated Praying in filthy clothing. And this saying that one can pray in filthy clothing and his prayer is valid. If he did that without an excuse, so he prayed with najasa on his clothing without an excuse, his prayer is valid and he has no reward. And if he had an excuse... He has reward, but I have never learned what's an excuse. فَلَا يُحْكَمُ بِكُفْرِهِ So he would not be judged with blasphemy. Meaning, what's being said here is, there are some things that were said by qualified mujtahids to be blasphemy. And other scholars didn't agree that that's blasphemy because... In some circumstances, this thing that they said is blasphemy in some circumstances is actually permissible. And according to some mujtahids, is also valid. So while some are saying that praying without, uh, praying with najasa on your clothing is kufr, or praying away from the qibla on purpose, in both cases on purpose, is kufr. Others are saying, how could that be kufr when there are circumstances when it's permissible without an emergency? Or when it is, there are some cases of these that happen to be the ijtihad of a mujtahid. How would it be kufr and some mujtahids actually arrived at the validity of it? So there's difference then. Is it kufr or it's not kufr? أما إذا صلى بغير الطهارة متعمدا فإنه يصير كافرا. So let me let me just back up to make sure everything's connected here. I'm going to back up to before the ayah. وبعض المشايخ قالوا some sheikhs said إن فعل ذلك بتأويل قوله تعالى if a person prayed away from the qibla on purpose out of an interpretation given to the ayah. فَأَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Whichever way you turn yourselves, then there is the Qibla. لَا يَكُونُ كَافِرًا Then he would not be a blasphemer. 
وَقَالَ مَشَيْخُ بُخَارَ And the sheikhs of Bukhara said, لَوْ صَلَّى إِلَىٰ غَيْرِ الْقِبْلَةِ لَا يَكْفُرْ Had one prayed away from the Qibla, he does not blaspheme. وَكَذَا إِذَا صَلَّى فِي الثَّوْبِ النَّجِسِ And likewise, if he prayed in filthy clothing. Filthy clothing. لِأَنَّ الصَّلَاةَ إِلَىٰ غَيْرِ الْقِبْلَةِ جَائِزَةِ جَائِزَةٌ حَالَةَ الْإِخْتِيَارِ because praying away from the Qibla is permissible under normal circumstances. Which is performing the optional prayer upon the animal while traveling. And among these scholars is who permitted prayer in filthy clothing. So there's... There would not be a judgment for one committing blasphemy. As for if he prayed without purification on purpose, then he would become a blasphemer. And said Shamsul Aimma Al Hulwani, may Allah have mercy upon him. يَكُونُ زِنْدِيقًا لِأَنَّ أَحَدًا لَمْ يُجَوِّزِ الصَّلَاةَ بِغَيْرِ طَهَارَةً He said one would be an irreligious blasphemer because there is no one who permitted prayer without purification. فَيَكُونُ اسْتِخْفَافًا بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَى So that would be belittling Allah, exalted is He. انتَهَى End quote. والقول الصحيح الذي يوافق قواعد مذهب الشافعي ومالك وغيرهما and the correct saying that complies with the rules of the madhhab of al-Shafi'i and Malik and others أنه لا يكفر is that one does not blaspheme وليس يلزم منه الاستخفاف بالدين and praying without purification on purpose is does not mandate and necessitate that he is belittling the religion. Now, here Shaykh says, Al Qawlu Sahih, the correct saying. So either that's because he's transmitting that, that this is the correct saying, or he is strengthening that from himself. And so he's a preponderator. And he is a preponderator. He says in the introduction of Al Muhtasar that. He took Sulla Muttawfiq, that's the original book from which he made the Mukhtasar, and he took out all the weak sayings and put strong sayings. So, what made him able to determine that? <laughs> Hey, hey.